Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the fifth in a series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi Emulation Lab Videos. In this video, which is Lab 5.1.3.7, we'll be looking at hacking MQTT. OK, now the topology is pretty much the familiar one, um, only what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be running all three nodes. So we've got a Kali Linux VM up the top, going through a uh, Oracle VirtualBox host only adapter into the Windows software bridge, which is taking the part of a hardware switch. We've got uh, three Raspberry Pis and we'll be booting all three up. Uh, one will be uh, set to the broker, one to the publisher and one to the subscriber. So node 1, broker, node 2, publisher, node 3, subscriber. I've already started the Kali Linux virtual machine. I've also started all three Raspberry Pi nodes. Uh, you'll see that uh, I've changed the host name on two of them to make them a little bit more obvious as to what they are. Uh, I haven't changed the hostname on the third one because I'm going to show you how we do that as per the lab. On the Kali Linux VM we've uh, done a service ISC DHCP server start to start the DHCP server and if you look at the uh, status with the service ISC DHCP server status you can see it's active and it's running and some leases have been handed out OK, on uh, Pi Kumu RPI 1, which I'm going to make the broker, I've got an IP address of 203.0.11.326. On Pi RPI 2, I have an IP address of 203.0.11.326. And you guessed it, that's the publisher on Pi RPI 3, which will be the subscriber. I have an IP address of 203.0.11.328. And of course, these were given out by the DHCP server. They're slightly different IP addresses than the ones used in the lab, but as long as you keep an eye on which IP address is which, it works perfectly well. It works exactly the same, of course. OK, as per the lab, uh, we're going to use the export uh, PS1 equals um, for the user, uh, for the uh, subscriber, for the hostname on this Raspberry Pi. Um, basically, exactly the same instructions that are in the labs, works flawlessly. So, what we can do is we can just change the hostname from QMU RPI3 to Pi subscriber. So, this makes a lot more sense. Uh, so, now we've got Kali Linux VM. I've just hit the Control Shift tab to open some more tabs. We've got the uh, Pi here, which let's just clear the screen there. There we go. Pi at broker, Pi at publisher, and Pi at subscriber. Excellent. Now this lab actually works absolutely perfectly um, as long as you follow the instructions very very carefully you should have no trouble whatsoever um, I've completed the full lab and it works flawlessly um, what I'm going to do I'm, I'm only going to show you the lab up to uh, part two so I'm going to do parts one and part two otherwise I'm kind of spoiling the experience for you and it is such a nice lab to do I'm not going to go through the entire lab I'm just going to show the first two parts however like I say you follow the instructions properly it will work absolutely perfectly. Um, if it doesn't work, then you're doing something wrong. OK, so uh, first thing, uh, and this is one of the little tiny gotcha moments, it does actually say that we should um, do a sudo and add the Pi user to the Mosquito group. Well, I run the lab without even doing that, and it just worked perfectly anyway. So I've just changed the uh, broker tab. Uh, we're on the uh, Kumo RPI1, the broker, and I'm going to run the groups command 
and you'll notice that uh, the Pi user isn't in the Mosquito group and like I say I didn't even add him to the Mosquito group and it still worked perfectly um, if I just uh, let's have a look run the command see it's now saying he's already a member of the group because uh, I I run through the command and uh, checked groups and it still doesn't say he's a member of the group um, however if it makes you feel better add him to the group um, like I say I didn't add him to the group I run through the entire lab worked fine also I discovered that you don't actually have to do that either the uh, sudo chmod644 for the uh, var log mosquito mosquito log in fact if you do do it on air environment there is no such file anyway um, so yep you can pretty much skip those two commands the add pi user to the mosquito group and the uh, changing of permissions on var log mosquito mosquito dot log makes no difference to the lab whatsoever in this environment seems to work perfectly fine without any of that so let's get into the lab so on the broker we'll run mosquito minus v okay so that's up and running now we'll switch to the subscriber tab and in the subscriber tab we'll run the command uh, mosquito underscore sub space hyphen d space hyphen h for the host um, we'll select the host uh, IP address the broker and we'll set the topic to Cisco IoT security user okay and that's also done we'll switch to the broker tab and we'll run the command mosquito underscore pub space hyphen d space hyphen h again pointing back to the broker's IP address dot two six for the topic Cisco IoT security users and the hyphen M we can send a message uh, live long and prosper okay message sent 21 bytes um, and then we can switch back to the subscriber and we can see here live long and prosper hey so the message was sent fine now for part two sniffing data using Kali so we're going to do a little old uh, man in the middle attack so uh, back to the Kali Linux tab and we'll run the command nmap and we'll scan the broker uh, we'll scan the broker on port 1883 and just see what happens Okay, it shouldn't take a particularly long time to complete that nmap scan obviously port 1883 is the port that we're listening on for the mosquito in fact if we go and have a quick look at the broker um, we can probably see that there we go port 1883 uh, new connections coming in from various devices uh, there we go uh, we can see that MQTT is actually uh, open We'll set up IP forwarding on the Kali Linux machine in order to make sure uh, that uh, the man in the middle attack is transparent to the users. Okay, so net IPv4 dot IP underscore forward has now been set to one. IP forwarding is activated. Um, I'll just use my app arrow in fact to find the etacap command there we go what a wonderful tool so man in the middle attack time now we'll do an etacap hyphen capital T Q space hyphen I for the interface Ethernet 0 space hyphen M for the module which is the art poisoning module um, we'll do our remote uh, now we're gonna set ourselves in between the machines dot two six and dot two seven so that's in between the broker and the publisher and we'll write that out to a file called dump dot pcap okay let's uh, activate etacap okay now don't worry about this send 
L2 error message that's popping up on the screen. Um, that's purely because in this particular environment we've got some DNS information uh, that's not being forwarded here. Uh, this is going out to Google's web servers. Absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the lab. Won't cause any problems whatsoever. So you can just leave that running in the background. Um, and then once we've now got Etacap running, um, we can just publish another uh, MQTT message. So we'll go back to the publisher now. So let's see. We've got the uh, the broker, the publisher. Uh, let's put in. Live long and prosper. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, message sent. 30 bytes now. We can have a little look at our subscriber. Our subscriber has received the message. Live long and prosper. Ho, ho, ho. Um, and now that that message has been sent, we can uh, quit at a cap. So we'll go back to Cali. Hit the Q for quit. What it's actually done is ARP poisoned the uh, Windows software bridge because of course a bridge and a switch are effectively the same thing, just a switch is a multi-port bridge. Now that should have generated a file called dump.pcap, we'll do a quick ls-l and yes we can see a file called dump.pcap, uh, how big is that in human understandable uh, terms? Always remember that one, Thor. A nice easy one to remember. LS minus Thor. Okay, um, now let's see. That's uh, 23k in size. Okay, um, and what you can do is you can do file. Again, learning a little bit of extra Linux here. File dump.pcap, and we can see uh, that it is indeed a TCP dump capture file. Okay, um, and then finally, what we'll do is we'll open that with Wireshark. And we can open it as a normal user, we don't need to be the uh, root user in order to do this. Okay, that's looking good. And uh, we can see a nice load of packets captured on the screen here. Um, what we'll do is we'll filter it for MQTT. Okay, and there is indeed a connection. Ah, that's interesting. We've only got a connection up there. I might have I might have done it a bit too quick. Yeah, that's no good. We've only got a connection up there. Let's try that again. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove dump.pcap. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just run etacap again. Just give it a little bit more time to uh, capture what's going on. Okay, so there's their broker. There's their publisher. There's our subscriber. Let's get a bit of clear space on the subscriber so as we can see what's going on. We'll pop back to the publisher. And let's just send something else over. So uh, live long and prosper. Jim. Okay. Live long and prosper, Jim. 25 bytes. Excellent. Okay. We'll uh, stop the packet capture with uh, Q. Uh, we should have the pcap file back in there again, dump.pcap, 
excellent. Um, let's have a look and see what Wireshark shows at dump.pcap this time. That's more like it. Okay, I think I was just a little tiny bit quick uh, shutting down the uh, packet capture the last time. Okay, so uh, as you can see, now we've got not just the connect command, but we've got uh, the rest of the uh, connection. So we've got a connect command, a connect acknowledgement. Interestingly, we've got the published message and then the disconnection request. Um, so if we actually do a uh, follow TCP stream, there we go. We've got the host name, we've got the topic, and we've also got the message. Okay, so I'm only going to do parts one and part two. Um, like I say, I've done the entire lab, and um, as long as you follow the instructions nice and carefully, step by step, uh, this lab just works really, really well. It's a really nice lab to do. Okay, so the authentication works uh, fine. Um, the TLS is very interesting, uh, setting up the certificate. Um, if you've never done that before, it's, uh, it's something you have to be very, very careful with when you're doing it. Uh, but like I say, uh, works like a dream, so I'll call that a day on this lab. Um, enjoy it. Um, it's a really nicely designed lab, and it works really well in an emulated Raspberry Pi environment. So thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next lab for the uh, Cisco IoT security Raspberry Pi emulation videos.